Hello, everyone. I am Dwango AC, Keeper of TaskBot. I have TaskBot right behind me here today. Obviously, we're not at a normal GDQ where you could see him live on stage, so this is, this is what we're doing for this event. I'd like to thank everyone who has made this possible. There's a huge number of people that have uh, contributed to this event's task content. But there's one person in particular that deserves a ton of credit, and that's TyKevin83, who went to a great length to, uh, to do the work on, uh, on getting all of these runs that you're going to see today put together. Just a couple of quick things. It's not going to take long at all. First, if you haven't seen it yet, head on over to the Yeti. There is an isometric TaskBot t-shirt, an awesome piece of TaskBot art. You got to check it out. $5 from every shirt goes directly to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. That's its shirt you should definitely check out. Also, if you would like to be part of our community, head on over to discord.tas.bot. We also have a store.tas.bot page where you can get your own replay device. Uh, we don't make a ton of money on it or anything. It's not about profit. It's just a small cottage community thing. But if you want to get into tool assistance speedruns, by all means, head on over there. I'm going to hand it over to TyKevin83. He is absolutely fantastic. He put a ton of effort into making this happen. Take it away, TyKevin. Thank you, Dwango AC. We have here Ty Kevin 83 TaskBot team, one of the admins and an ambassador from the Task Videos website. I do a lot of Pokemon Gen 1 glitch list tasking. You might have seen me in the last week with that. But now, today, instead, we have here a run of Freedom Planet on LibTas from Flittervy, Triss, and Revolution. This is really big. The game is running live on my laptop right here behind me which is plugged into wall power this time, unlike at GDQX 2018. Also, LibTAS, considerably more reliable than Hourglass, which is the previous Windows tasking system. A lot of people we ask, a lot, like, a lot of people actually on the speedrunning and task subreddits ask us, how do you task Windows games? And it's not really something you can do yet, but we can show you tasking games on Linux, which can include some Windows games being run through a variety of systems on LibTAS on Linux. So we're going to show you this new LibTAS system live right here, right now. And I'm going to get the run started, and I have Tridis and Tris and Flittervy here on commentary with me to talk about the run. And we're going now. All right. <laughs> oh, so we're here today. This is the long-awaited Freedom Planet Mila Tass. Oh. The reason we run Mila is because she's the fastest character. <laughs> You'll start to see that right away with uh, with all this crazy movement. Um, it's it's crazy. There's there's lasers going everywhere. You're hopping. Uh, I don't even. I, I can't. I can't. So it's crazy. The main gimmick with Mila, her whole uh, her whole movement is centered around this laser, which we call the Super Shield Burst, or just a burst. Uh, you have to charge it up first uh, before you can fire it, which takes yeah, roughly half a second or so. So there's a bit of a rhythm to running the game. Uh, the TAS, however, is able to speed up this process significantly with something we call burst cancelling. This is a frame-perfect input every single time uh, one of these lasers is happening. Uh, it's basically impossible for humans to do, but of course TAS is TAS. So uh, because of that, this character in particular has a terrifyingly high skill ceiling. And, uh, terrifyingly. And and you guys have even been improving the run up until the event, right? We just got a new version of yeah, this run. It was, <laughs> it new, was two, it, two days ago that we finished it, I think. Two days ago. Yeah, and we're going to see that right here. Tons of different uh, amazing things. So there's lots of different like zipping mechanics like you'll see here, which uh, really quickly, the way zipping behaves in this game is if you get stuck inside of a wall or inside of terrain, it tries to push you upwards as like a fail safe to get out. It, this was programmed in intentionally, but we can use it to our advantage in a whole bunch of different places. Uh, there's lots of different ways we can get ourselves stuck intentionally. Uh, and I'll explain those probably as they become more relevant, but for now, we just have this boss fight. It's sort of an auto-scroller. You can't really speed it up very much. Throwing some green lava blocks at the monster. And there we go. I, I love that tech there at the end, <laughs> hanging off the side of the, oh, yeah, there's, the ledge. Um, so this, this game's also kind of busted, um, just the way that it's programmed. The, the engine that it's made in is, uh, is Multimedia Fusion, which isn't a super great engine. There's, there's lots of, um, how do I explain it? 
little little edge cases and problems that had to be like manually fixed and uh, the result of that well I think I can explain that more in the next stage there's a really good example mm -hmm. but for now um, let's see oh there's a little have... flutter there flutter there yes Love the that. flutter so um, that's a that's a mechanic it's similar to like what uh, what you'd see from say Yoshi for example uh, you basically hold jump in the air and you flutter upwards the thing that we can abuse uh, with this mechanic is the fact that when you're fluttering, the game is not checking for collision below you. What this means is if you can push yourself down really fast and then start fluttering, you're able to clip through some floors. Uh, it's important that the floor is thin enough, of course, because the flutter, it tries to push you up. Um, I'm going to explain this next room really quick because it's pretty insane what happens here. So for a while, we theorized different ways to skip this whole section. Basically, all these rooms are stacked on top of each other, and we can zip vertically up through all of them, which saves a massive amount of time. This isn't possible for humans to do, but uh, it was discovered after a lot of theory crafting that, that it was actually possible for Tas. And that's a uh, massive time save. I, I, maybe 30 seconds or more. And uh, in, a game, in a game that's this optimized, that's absolutely massive. <laughs> um, just for reference, uh, the record for this category is maybe 27 minutes, and we run it off of the in-game time, not real time. Uh, which is important for, actually, this boss fight in particular, because we have timer freezes. So, mm -hmm. when you're fighting this boss, the in-game timer is actually off-screen, and if you kill it fast enough, then the timer stays off-screen, which means it's not running. Which means it saves in-game time. <laughs> so there's, there's mm -hmm. like, lots of little things like that that make this game really interesting. Just, uh, routing our strategies and things around in-game time rather than real time. Yeah, Flat, how much time do you think you've spent working on this task? How long have you been working on it? Oh, hey, I, I've been working since early 2017, I think. Most of the work went on making it consist, run consistently, actually. Very cool. And you had yeah, to switch so at some point during that work from your old cheat engine to the LibTAS system. We didn't entirely move on from this because we still use some tools of the other, some features of the other tools to work on this task. Cool, cool. Yeah, so for so me... You, for... you work with both. Oh, okay. Yeah, same time, kind of. yeah we, we switched back and forth. But like in my case, for example, I don't know how LibTAS works. I've never run a Linux machine. So instead, uh, we've used an entirely different tool to develop the task. It was a tool built in Cheat Engine by by Flad himself. It's an incredible tool, but it just, it was having some like little manipulation issues here and there that it was causing like playback these things and stuff. So we moved over to LibTAS and it's great. It works fine. It's awesome. And now we're here. It's so <laughs> consistent. Like I haven't seen a desync with the, between the system and the game running since I've been running it. So I'm, I'm really happy with how LibTAS has progressed. But anyway, the game too. I mean, you're still flying around and zipping all over the place. Yeah, this character is insane. So Mila with these lasers is one of the only characters that can build up to the speed cap of the game from nothing. Um, <laughs> so like Lilac, for example, has her dragon boost, but that's uh, not. So the, just to throw some numbers out here, uh, this game has uh, like an arbitrary speed cap of 15, just as a number. Um, and the match that the match piece pixel per frame. Yeah, it's 15 pixel per frame, and this game runs at 60 FPS. So that would be what uh, 900 pixels you can move per second. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and everything is measured to pixels. And uh, although we're gonna get some sub pixel wall clipping in a bit, if I remember correctly from us talking about oh. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a little bit later on, but yeah, this this game actually has sub pixels. So even this though particular, this particular session can clip to the ship. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Really uh, cool. How about we talk about the next stage? Because this is pretty insane. So this is a strategy that that we can use in human runs too, but it's it's been optimized even more through TAS. So this stage takes place on an airship, and what you can do here, uh, because Mila is busted, is actually fly underneath the entire stage. 
And this is faster <laughs> by like a significant amount. <laughs> and this is frame perfect meshing, 30 hertz. Yeah, so um, the flutter mechanic is actually really nuanced. Um, there's sort of like an invisible meter that like tells you how much, like how many frames you, you have left to flutter. Um, but if you mash frame perfectly, this meter decreases like really slowly. So you can flutter for really, really long distances. Which allows us to pull things, pull mm -hmm. off things like this. <laughs> it's amazing. And you're going to repeat this for two more ships. Mm. Um, another thing, another thing we're doing here is to, I just like to explain real quick. What we're doing here is resetting, and uh, that's putting us up to a checkpoint back on the ship. And the reason we need to do this is because we need to defeat the boss on each ship in order to progress. Very cool. We got any yeah, quick donations we... we can throw in during the third airship? Yeah, do it. Sure, we have $25 from Deckard saying, Tazbot hype! Freedom Planet has been a game very dear to my heart ever since I played in late 2019. Now that I've been running it for myself for the past year, I can definitely say, what is shown here? I only wish I could pull off. Thanks so <laughs> Thanks, much <buddy>. for <laughs> Tris, Robo, and Flat for putting in the effort to be able to show this off. You're truly what makes our small speedrunning community special. Aw, thank you so much. I'd, I'd like to shout out Revolution really quick too. Uh, he couldn't be here today, but... Um... But he also contributed a lot to this, and especially this boss fight that's coming up. He he built this basically from the ground up, and it's really amazing. So just take a look. <laughs> I love the bosses in this game. The, the, the art design is great. Oh yeah, they're all awesome, and they're a lot of them are really different in the way that you have to fight them. Like this one, for example, it's got nine orbs on its back. You have to break all of the orbs first, and then hit the head. You have to do this five times, and uh, Revo optimized this so that each of the hits only takes one super shield burst. And this was like really difficult to do. It's like, I don't, I don't even know. Frame, pixel, sub-pixel, super duper, ultra mega perfect. <laughs> and, he does, and you have to do it for like four out of the five phases, which is totally crazy. <laughs> and it's really fast. But that is the end. Awesome. This is far from over. Here we have a uh, cute little animation. <laughs> Yeah, with each stage complete, that's telling you the in-game time that you're optimizing for, correct? Yeah, that's right. And uh, and the final file time we'll see at the end is just a sum of all of those individual stage times. Awesome. Oh, so this is Jade Creek. This is a water stage. And um, there are some pretty neat swimming mechanics in this game, uh, which you'll get to see especially later on in the stage. But another thing about this stage is that it's based... Um, there's a screen later on that has an enormous... Uh, global cycle, which is a cycle that starts from the very beginning of the stage. So, like, even right now, we're rushing to get to this cycle. Uh, and, of course, human runners have to deal with this as well, and it's... I'm not a fan of it, personally. I think it's really annoying, but uh, a lot of people <laughs> like this. This is one of their favorites. <laughs> this is It's a really fast stage. Really flashy. <laughs> Has great music. All the good stuff. Not bad for a water stage, I'd say. And, and I have to say, we, we turned on the music specifically for you guys. It's, it's not automatically turned on by the tasks or anything. So we made sure it was okay. on. Please, could you also explain these pauses just, just oh, uh, before fade up, fade up transition up. screens? Right, so... Um, the fade out. So in between screens, uh, like when, you're, when you enter the load zone to enter the next screen, uh, there's a little fade out that plays uh, just to make it look more smooth like you'll see there. But what we do is uh, we can pause and restart in the in the little pause menu. And that like despawns the fade out, which just instantly cuts us to the next screen. And that saves both in-game time and real time. <laughs> it's another one of these crazy little things that this game does. <laughs> awesome. OK, so here is uh, but here's a clip. But doing real runs, it's, it's, it can be kind of risky, because if you fail it, you you just restart and have to redo the entire checkpoint. Yeah, it's it's risky, but Tass, of course, can do it perfectly. And like, <laughs> and like, the, other, and like the other stage, Miller just went underneath the stage and then pause after reaching the last checkpoint. Now, despite the, fact that, the despite the fact that this is a water stage, actually a lot of stages in this game have water underneath them, and uh, we can't clip underneath every stage like that, but uh, in what, some cases you can clip underneath. What is going on with the screen? <laughs> It's so oh, sideways. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, when you pause and restart, uh, the screen kind of wipes from left to right. Uh, just another little animation to make things look cleaner. 
but you can cut that animation short by killing a boss because when you kill a boss everything sort of freezes yeah and that's that's basically just swag it doesn't affect the run or anything but it looks funny so we do it <laughs> great swag <laughs> oh it's great uh not a lot to talk about actually um this stage is programmed really strangely uh you'll see it on the next screen we're gonna pause and restart at the very start of the screen and what that does is uh, stops the in-game timer for a few seconds. Now, even though the screen was black there, for some reason on this stage and this stage alone, even though the screen is black, your inputs are actually unlocked. So you can move during that blackness while the timer is not running, <laughs> and it's actually faster. So we do it twice here. Awesome. It's, it's really funny. <laughs> and of course, human runs can do that too. Uh, now this screen, this screen is also crazy. Um, like I was mentioning earlier, you can actually clip underneath of a lot of stages. Not just the uh, the airship stage, but earlier, but uh, but Jade Creek and this one as well. So in just a minute, you're going to see this here. And here we go. <laughs> and now we're just going to fly to the end. What stage? <laughs> this is Trap Hideout. Oh yes, this, yes. This, this is about this is about the halfway point of the run. This is trap fighter, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and here we are at the boss fight. These ninjas are really random. Luckily, there aren't a whole lot of them. Uh, the other character, Carol, has to fight 99 of them, which is completely insane. And it's. Uh, and this is Bayon's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Don't worry about him. This is one of the one of the shorter stages in the run. Uh, but coming up next is Thermal Base, which is. I would like to say the most busted stage in the run. Right out, right, like, we're out of bounds. Here we go. <laughs> so we can just maneuver around the screen here on top uh, instead of underneath it. And wait for it. Now we're out of bounds again. <laughs> yeah, this is probably my favorite super pig game of the run. Because Mila is flooded, starting the flooder on the same time she lands on a slope. So she's throwing the angle of the slope in the air, making the walls and floors collision street differently. Yeah, so and we can use this to go into a wall corner. Like this. A corner and just sleep <laughs> like this. Yeah, just gonna mention here again, it is really cool that we get to have Triss and Flitterby with us on commentary. It's very rare in a GDQ that we get to have the actual authors of the tasks with us to talk about the run. And that's one of the great things I love about this online GDQ event, being able to do those commentaries with the original task authors over the over the uh, Discord connection we have. Yeah, it does, it does kind of suck that uh, <laughs> our community in particular is really bad for just having runners unfortunately not able to attend live events. It's, it's happened a lot in the past, and it's really unfortunate because there are a lot of really talented people in this community. I'm, I'm just absolutely honored to be a part of it. <laughs> anyway, this is the boss fight. Something I want to point out here, um, these ladders, you can do a, an interesting glitch. Uh, if you run off the top of them, like climb, climb up them on the same frame that you take damage, uh, like for example from one of these spike balls that are being thrown up, it stores your position so you can do teleports. <laughs> um, and this can, this can also be done in human runs. It's just swag, of course. <laughs> but we do, we do it a lot here. We have to wait anyways. Yeah, it's just waiting for the Pretty next fast. phase to start. Uh, and here's one more thing. Again, we're storing an angle off of a little corner, and then, boom, now we're out of bounds. Yeah, and using the ladders do not, do not I love it. remove the angle. I love it. Storage. Yeah, ladders, ladders are cool. Um, there's, there's some neat things you can do with ladders. They store a lot of values when you climb on them. Okay, this is an auto-scroller. This lasts like a little over a minute or something, so you should go crazy with donations if you can. Donations! <laughs> do it. No worries. Uh, we have a $50 donation from Sergal saying, ever since I saw Tazbot's hilarious Brain Age run, I've been a huge fan of that funky little robot donating for the chance to see as much of it as I can tonight. And awesome. what, what an iconic Taz run. Uh, we have $1,000 from Two for saying, all hail Tazbot. We have $50 from Nux Tenma saying, oh boy, it's Taz o'clock. All hail Tazbot. 
We have an anonymous $25 donation saying, beep, boop, beep, go Tazbot. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Probably can squeeze in one or two more. Okay, cool. We have $50 from Kim saying, it's been a long week. We all need more Tazbot. And then we have $150 from Dr. Agonborn saying, I need more Tazbot. I always need more Tazbot. Agreed. Who doesn't? Alrighty, we're coming into the longest stage of the game, so uh, get ready. This is Battle Glacier. <laughs> right off the bat, we uh, we grab a shield there at the start. It just helps us out. Uh, I never explained shields, but they're just a little mechanic in this game that uh, they protect you from damage, and they also mm -hmm. stop uh, any hit stun that you might receive uh, from taking damage. So they're useful to just like plow through attacks. And yeah. it's helpful in this stage in particular because there's lots of bullets and things flying around. It's really easy to get hit and mm -hmm. like lose your rhythm. You become a hexagon, and then you're all good. Yeah. The power of geometry. <laughs> so uh, the early half of the stage uh, doesn't have anything crazy. It's mostly just really tight movement, platforming stuff, and fade-out skips, of course. Um, the second half is where it starts to get a little more broken. We'll start clipping through things. Uh, these drills, I love them, so I wanted to explain this really quick because this is like my favorite thing in the task. Uh, these drills, basically the way they work is you have to hit them you have to like, with an attack, uh, and they fire off in the direction that you hit them to break these blocks so you can progress. The thing is, they're not programmed, uh, like, it's not based on the direction that you hit them, it's just based on the direction that the character is facing. So you can actually be on the completely incorrect side and uh, as long as they're facing the right way, they'll still fly in the right direction. And it's, <laughs> it's hilarious. That was just discovered totally by accident, but I laugh every time I see it. <laughs> uh, there's more of that pause buffering. Yep. Um, this pause buffering specifically was to cut a, a bit of the slow down from between the boss. Right. Uh, that was a, some, another thing I, that was never explained, but here's a zip. That saves 15 seconds, I think. Um, so at the end of some boss fights in this game, there's a little slowdown effect that's applied, just like for dramatic effect, basically. Um, but if you pause the game on the exact frame that that slowdown starts, or uh, in some cases if you mash pause, then it sort of gets rid of the slowdown effect, which saves real time. It doesn't matter for in-game of time, um, but like you can do it for swag or to save real time. And of course, TAS is TAS, so we can hit all these frame perfect inputs. This is Sparky. Uh, we ride him over to a corner, and we use him to zip. Uh, this is also, you can fight this enemy earlier on. It's like a mid-boss in the stage, but we skipped it with, uh, with a zip. And now we have the boss. So another shield that we have, there's like five elemental shields. The one we have now is the fire shield, and what this does is damage on contact. This is really useful for this boss fight in particular because it's not based on like flat damage numbers that you deal, but just individual hits. So since since the shield is constantly actively dealing ticks of damage, like every frame, uh, we can basically kill the boss as fast as possible. Very cool. And here we pick up another shield out of the ground. That's a little mechanic that Mila can do is digging in the ground to pick up some items. <laughs> also, uh, and then, flo and floating gas can. <laughs> Behold. <laughs> Behold the gas can. And there's more of that screen wipe effect where we've got yeah. <laughs> half cut off. Another funny thing is that Marx is used to shoot. Yeah, like in the, it, during the, cut scene. the way cutscenes are programmed, it's like Lilac is supposed to be the main character, so things happen to her instead of the character you're playing as. It's, it's just funny. Another another weird nuance to this game's programming. But yeah, here we go. We have four stages left. They're all fairly short, but um, each one's really fast-paced and cool to watch. The stage introduces teleporters, I think. It, it, yeah, this is the first time we see them. Mm -hmm. Intended teleporters, as opposed to the earlier it, teleporters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you could probably throw in a donation if you'd like really quick. Sure, we have, let's check it out. We have a $50 donation from Blitz Hedgy saying, starting my day watching this awesome Tazbot run of Freedom Planet with my dog, Mila. 
That's right. I love this game so much that I named my dog after Mila. I <laughs> always amazing. love seeing Fre <laughs> I always love seeing Freedom Planet appear at GDQ. Thank you for bringing it back again. Thank you. So, um, we have these these little wind tunnel airlock things. Uh, if you fall through them, then it's an instant kill. This game doesn't have a whole, whole lot of like instant kill scenarios. Um, there are one or two stages where you're able to fall off the bottom of the screen, like the uh, the airship stage, for example. Uh, and then there was one stage where it's possible to get crushed in between terrain and die. But other than that, it's fairly safe. Once again, we have the fire shield helping us with this boss fight. Very nice. I think the fire shield is generally the, the favorable shield to have. Yeah. For this character, at least. Extra other shields damage have other is always amazing in speedruns. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so this stage coming up is pretty infamous for uh, for the other two characters. But uh, it's... I, I like to call it the pinnacle of object zipping, which I can explain now. So Mila also has a mechanic where she can pick objects up, like these crates, for example. And um, what we can use them for is zipping. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, this stage has like, I think six object zips in total, and all of them are frame perfect. Here's another one. It's really, really annoying for. Uh, yeah, while, while crossing the 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 objects while carrying the block, they don't have contact. They don't have collision. So if we pass to it and then stop charging block. So then they have to lose you again, and then they choose it into each other, yeah. even the objects. Yeah, so for this. you're manipulating when the blocks have collision to zip up through the, the stage. Yeah, so like, because, because they have collision again, and because you're inside something solid, then of course the game tries to push you up. Very cool. Here we can reflect this boss's attacks back at him. Quite nice. They do a lot of damage too, so it's, it's really fast. And this is a sub-minute stage. <laughs> hmm, let's see here. Final Dreadnought 3 is uh, probably, probably the easiest stage in the game. Uh, there are these booster pads that set your speed to max instantly. Those things, those blue things there. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice, uh, even just in casual play, it's a really, really fast stage. Uh, there are those those fire spitters there. Uh, their hitboxes are actually random. They're RNG, <laughs> which is really annoying. <laughs> uh, more teleporters. These teleporters move you actually... So the speed cap of the game is 15, but these teleporters, I'm pretty sure, move you at 20, which is a lot faster than the speed cap. There are a couple, there are, there are a couple situations, I think, where you're actually able to break the speed cap. Uh, maybe running on treadmills. Uh, there were water currents back in Thermal Base. Mm. Just little things like that. But just flat movement speed on the ground is capped at 15. And I see. And this is perfect, perfect fluttering break in there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I should explain the, the big thing with speedrunning this game, which is air drag. So if you move upwards while in the air, uh, the game slowly degrades your speed. Um, there are ways to get around this, um, but like with that perfect fluttering, for example, uh, you basically just want to do it in a straight horizontal line. You can do it going up, and you can also do it while descending, but of course if you're going up, then you're losing speed, so you kind of want to avoid that. Yeah, to be more specific, there's a small... There's, there's a small window of four, zero to 4. By, by the oh, way, that's, that's that dreadblocks. Deep. That's like sub-pixel perfect. <laughs> It's like it's like one one thousandth of a pixel. No big deal. <laughs> Just this game being this game. Very good. This is this is a big laser. We do another zip here. This one's a lot easier. And um, it's nice with zipping in this game. It pushes you upwards. Um, a lot of the stages in this game are horizontal, like you move left to right to get to the end. But a few of the ones closer to the end, like this one for example, are are like big towers, which means you can climb all the way to the top of them with zips to save huge amounts of time. And here we go, this is the final boss. Don't blink. This first phase is reused from uh, the Battle Blitzer mid-boss, but it has, I think it has a different attack pattern. 
Interesting. Yeah. And this fight in particular was really annoying uh, for desyncs. This this gave us a lot of trouble when we were using the uh, the cheat engine program. But it's all good now. <laughs> Very cool. And this is the end. We restart there to skip a cutscene. And that Page is it. complete. Ah, Very 55 cool. seconds. <laughs> We've got just a little bit more time, I think, showing the the end time of the whole run, I believe. Yes, so we uh, we have to wait till the end of the end credits here to see the final time. Yeah, so life routing is really tight in this game. Uh, the RTA run actually takes an intentional game over to, to bring your lives back up. But of course, Tess doesn't need that. And here we go. 1943.06. Sub 20 minutes. Very awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much for being here with me on the commentary for Freedom Planet, Milla. I really appreciate it. And let's head back to the desk for more. Coming up next, we'll have Link's Awakening DX with Glyph DX and Twisted Tamarack.